Hello, everybody. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Rob Crett, the Executive Director uh, and CEO of the Connecticut Historical Society, and I'm very pleased that you've joined us this afternoon. I want to thank a number of our board members that have been able to join us as well. Michael Cantor, our current board president, George Jepson, and Jason Rojas. Today, on National Voter Registration Day, we are honored to welcome so many who are dedicated to educating citizens, registering voters, and celebrating democracy. At the Connecticut Historical Society, it's our role to place today's occasion within the greater context of history and those who came before us. 56 years ago, protesters marched the 54-mile route from Selma to Montgomery, Alabama, in an effort to register black voters in the South and confront racist policies. The historic march and Martin Luther King's Jr.'s participation in it raised awareness of the difficulties faced by black voters and the need for a National Voting Rights Act. Later that year, President Lyndon Johnson signed into law the Voting Rights Act, which banned methods specifically used to disenfranchise black voters. Before passage of the Voting Rights Act, an estimated 23% of eligible black voters were registered nationwide. By 1969, that number rose to 61%. In our current exhibition, Connecticut Freedom Workers, Remembering the Civil Rights Movement, we explore the lives and legacies of six Connecticuts who worked tirelessly for equality. The bravery, hope, and optimism evident in the civil rights activists in the 1960s serve as reminders and inspiration for those who continue to carry the torch today. Those who came before us, like the individuals featured in the exhibition, remind us of the importance of ensuring all voices are heard. We hope that you'll take some time following this event or come back another day to discover the stories of those who worked for equality not that long ago. And we hope you will feel inspired as you continue this important work yourselves. And now it's my pleasure to introduce Connecticut's Secretary of State, Denise Merrill. Secretary Merrill, thank you for being here today, for acknowledging the importance of an understanding of history and culture as it was in the past and as it continues today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rob. And first of all, Happy National Registration Day! Yay! <laughs> and thank you to the Connecticut Historical Society for having us here today. Uh, and it's a pleasure to be with all, uh, with all of you in the shadow of the ex exhibit about Connecticut's Freedom Riders to celebrate our victories expanding voting rights and to celebrate our modern day voting rights heroes. And that's why we're here today. It's especially exciting for me to get a chance to honor old friends and newer ones who have worked with me to make registering and voting more convenient for every Connecticut voter. This year's legislative session was one of the most consequential sessions for voting rights in recent Connecticut history. And I want to thank everybody here for that victory. On almost every important aspect of election administration, registering to vote, how and when to cast a ballot, who is eligible to vote, Connecticut made strides this year to make it easier to register and more convenient to vote for every Connecticut citizen. And that in the face of the restrictions of COVID and the tumult of the 2020 election. So this for me was uh, the crowning glory of Connecticut elections last year, 2020. Who would have thought that it would be the best election that I can remember in Connecticut uh, history, certainly during my time in office. This year alone, the Connecticut legislature passed and Governor Lamont, who is here today with us, signed laws that codified and expanded automatic voter registration, extended the right to vote to people on parole, made the very popular and successful secure absentee ballot boxes a permanent fixture of Connecticut's elections, eliminated prison gerrymandering, extended the COVID voting changes, including allowing every voter to vote by absentee ballot who chose to through the 2021 election, and made it easier for people with disabilities to cast their ballots and make their voices heard. 
and Connecticut is one step closer to joining the 45 states, that's 45 states, that allow their citizens to vote primary to, uh, prior to election day without having to have an excuse. So on the 2022 ballot, the voters of Connecticut will get to decide if they want the option of casting their ballots in person prior to election day. That was a tremendous victory and the legislature and the governor deserve our thanks for passing these important pieces of legislation. <laughs> Connecticut is clearly committed to expanding the right to vote, but these victories don't happen in a vacuum and without significant support. They happen because committed people inside and outside of government, work hard, organize, advocate, and fight to make these important changes. We are here to honor that fight, to honor the activists, those we know and those we don't, who spent their time and energy last year advocating to remove obstacles to voting and encouraging their communities to get involved. So today, specifically, we're here to honor three people whose commitment to expanding the franchise has helped us make our state a better place. I am so excited to award the first award today, which goes to our first John Lewis Youth Leadership Award in Connecticut. This is a national award that's awarded by the National Association of Secretaries of State. It's a newly instituted award to honor the work of John Lewis, and I think I need no explanation for who John Lewis was and is in our memories and hearts today. Um, the first award today that I would like to give, our first John Lewis Leadership Award, will go to Akia Kalam, and she's here today. I would like to ask her to step forward. <laughs> so the John Lewis Award was established for someone uh, under the age of 23, who has personified the work of John Lewis. And as, I, as you know, he famously said, I don't make trouble, I make good trouble. So this award is designed for someone who has made good trouble in our state by being an incredible activist from a very young age. Uh, she is an organizer, a political activist, an advocate for social and racial justice, and an educator. So Akia is the personification of good trouble. She is the director of the Community Impact and Marketing at Waterbury Bridge to Success Community Partnership. She is the president of the Connecticut State Conference NAACP Youth and College Division and the chair of national initiatives and development for the NAACP National Youth Works Committee, in addition to completing a master's program in education. She has fought for racial justice across the state, as well as registering voters and encouraging civic engagement, and has focused on her own generation, on youth participation. And I think this is the moment that I should point out that in Connecticut last year, in the 2020 election, we had the highest increase in number of young people, 18 to 24 years old, who both registered and came out to vote in the history of the state. And I think that's a tremendous accomplishment and shows that this generation is ready to come to life politically, and I couldn't be more pleased. <laughs> So if Akia is any indication, our future as a country is bright indeed. So I would now like to award to Akia her award and ask her to say a few words. So down here we have Connecticut's first John Lewis Youth Leadership Award, National Association of Secretaries of State to Akia Kalam, presented by me, Connecticut Secretary of State 2021. Congratulations, Akia. <laughs> I'm not nervous, but today, I, I, I usually I am. Um, titles and positions may get you into rooms, but who you are as a person is what keeps you there. Good afternoon. My name is Akia S. Column or Akia Sheena K. Erona Column, a name my parents gave me 24 years ago, jam-packed with meaning, purpose, and culture. That name, Akia, means firstborn. Sheena means God is gracious. K, meaning keeper of the keys. Erona, meaning to live. And Column, meaning dove. When I was writing my remarks this morning, the question dawned on me, who are you outside of your accomplishments? I guess you can tell by my name 
It's a complete sentence, and that sums up my life. <laughs> you see, my, my cornerstone of, of advocacy, I always credited the church, but my parents, Harper and Paulette Collum, emigrated from Jamaica to the United States many years ago, and I saw the resiliency not only in their eyes, but their actions, which set a precedent for me, for my little sister and I. I would be remiss if I didn't thank God for keeping me on this journey, my family for being by my side, State Representative Brandon McGee for always letting me know that he sees the work that I've done and will continue to do. Thank you for nominating me for this award. To Post University, the NAACP, what a great bridge to success. Thank you for helping me redefine my leadership within the realms of your organization. And Madam Secretary Denise Merrill, thank you so much for selecting me to be the first recipient of the National Association of Secretaries of States John Lewis Youth Leadership Award in the small but mighty state of Connecticut. Who knew this 5'2 black girl who grew up in Brooklyn, New York, in an era of stop and frisk, would come to Connecticut on a track scholarship, start the three-time award-winning Black Student Union, join the NAACP, ultimately becoming the former youth and college president for the state and chair of national initiatives of, of na on the national level for the association winning an, an award for building out a comprehensive civic engagement plan for the census, the elections, and COVID-19, leaning into hashtag raise the rate of fast foot completion in the city of Waterbury through Waterbury Bridge to Success, would be in a position like this to receive such a prestigious award. The late John Lewis once said, every generation leaves behind a legacy. What, what that legacy will be is def determined by the people of, the, of that generation. What legacy do you want to leave behind? Thank you once again and looking forward to continuing the work that has left to be done. And congratulations, Akia. You can see why this girl caught our eye and uh, caught the eye of a lot of other people. She has done so much good work in the state. So thank you very much. And congratulations to you, her father. And so nice of you to come today. And thank you for giving her the support she has obviously enjoyed over the years. <laughs> and so now we have a, a, a few other awards to award, and then I'm going to recognize some people for all the work they have done, because as I said at the beginning, this doesn't happen in a vacuum. This happens because of the hard work of literally thousands of people across the state. So next, we're going to talk about the two uh, receivers this year of the NAS Medallion Award which we award each year to those people who have done extraordinary work uh, toward making our elections safer, more secure, and better for everyone. So this year, we had two awardees. Uh, we will start with uh, Carol Rizzolo. So Carol Rizzolo, please Carol, come on up. <laughs> I will first tell you a little bit about Carol and why she came to our attention. Carol had a 20-year career as a physician's assistant, has a doctorate in mythology and depth psychology, and is certified as a personal and executive coach. But that's not why we're here. Connecticut spends most of her time organizing grassroots activists and helping Connecticut residents communicate with their legislators, primarily to expand the franchise to vote. She helped thousands of Connecticut residents reach out to their legislators and their neighbors in support of early voting, universal access to absentee ballots, automatic voter registration, and the other key election reforms that passed this year. Carol and activists like her are the major reason this legislative session was so successful and why Connecticut voters will face significantly fewer obstacles to voting in the coming years. She worked with organizations that are also here today, the advocacy groups like the League of Women Voters. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, right. Common Cause, who also is represented here today. Uh, and groups like Indivisible, which was very active in uh, Fairfield County and other places. So there were numbers of groups. Oh, yes, Indivisible. There you are. <laughs> Nice to see you. So, I mean, it took the, the great activism of all these groups, but Carol was relentless. And I think many legislators can tell you, can testify to that fact. And that's one thing it takes. Persistence is important in advocacy work. 
She was persistent, and she talked to anyone who would talk to her about the importance of these election issues this year, and I am convinced that we never would have had the success we did without her work. So, Carol, thank you so much, and so on behalf of NAS, oh, we don't have your award here today. We actually oh. awarded it to her. Well, we awarded it to her earlier in the year, and this is to recognize her publicly. So, Carol, thank congratulations. You. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. As a rabble-rousing outsider, I think it's extraordinary to be recognized with this medallion award. And indeed, as a group with the Indivisibles from all over the state, we had organized 34 nonpartisan groups starting last March, a year ago March. And we met every week to discuss how are we going to do this around the state, who were the legislators, who were the key players, how did we get out postcards. We sent out over a quarter million postcards. In, uh, here in Connecticut, as well as voting rights in southern states, often where voters of color had been purged from the voter rolls, giving information about how to get people back onto the voter rolls. It's been hugely exciting. It is such a gift to live in a state run by people who believe in voting rights. And it's <laughs> absolutely. And I'm not sure we could have had any better advocates in office to, for us to be able to contact and be in touch with. So thank you to you folks. And thank you to all of the different groups that participated with us in those weekly calls, week after week after week, and to all the legislators who didn't mind my sending text saying, so, so, are you bringing it up today? So, huh? Do we have absentee balloting yet, huh? <laughs> so we did manage to get early voting to be on to the ballot for 2022. We still have absentee ballot, thankful to the governor for pushing that through, that this November we can still use absentee ballots. We have a ton of voter education that we still need to do, particularly for next year, where we will not be, and the year after, where we won't be able to have absentee balloting uh, with an unrestricted access or use COVID. So voting rights hasn't, the work hasn't stopped, and our work hasn't stopped. So again, thank you so much. Thank you, Carol. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Carol, for me, is testament to the fact that one person can make a huge difference. So, uh, Our second NAS Medallion Award winner this year is someone who is familiar to many in the election world, and that is my former uh, election director, Peggy Reeves. Peggy, are you here? Where's Peggy? Yes, come up, yes. So Peggy has spent her life make it e making it easier for people to cast their ballots as the Wilton Registrar of Voters for, I think, 16 years, something like that? Yes. <laughs> as a state representative and as Connecticut's director of elections. Connecticut owes Peggy a great debt. She implemented election day registration, online voter registration, and the first iteration of automatic voter registration. That would have been impossible without her hard work. She's also a national star, having served on the boards of the National Association of State Election Directors and the Electronic Registration Information Center, also known as ERIC, which has helped us clean up the voter lists in Connecticut. She's also my very dear friend and, um, and election administrators in Connecticut across the country, and myself included, miss her very much. She did retire a few years ago, but no one is more deserving of this award than Peggy Reeves. So Peggy, thank you so much. <laughs> And we do have your award. And it says, in recognition of your unwavering dedication to democracy, your many years of service to the state of Connecticut, the town of Wilton, and to the profession of election administration, your efforts have protected our most fundamental right, the right to vote. So congratulations, Peggy. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, I do have a few words, and Gabe Rosenberg told me to um, make it brief, or he's going to give me the hook. But um, <laughs> I do, I do want to. Well, it is a big honor, but I also want to honor the people I've worked with for so many years. It's been an honor to be a part of this team for nearly a decade. How fortunate I, I was to work with these people! I was always motivated to do more. They made me smarter. My boss and my colleague Denise Merrill. Two great deputy secretaries of the state, Scott Bates and Jamie Spallone, and the entire elections team. And I haven't even mentioned the Halloween ice storm of 2011. 
which left nearly a million homes, businesses, and polling places without power, just as we were getting ready for an election. And Superstorm Sandy arrived one year later, in late October of 2012, with more flooding and power outages. And the cyber attacks and the Russian troll farms of 2016, creating chaos and sowing division in the presidential election. And then 2020 arrived, and we all wondered how we would be able to conduct a presidential election in the midst of a global pandemic. But working with national officials, state officials, and the tremendous work of the local registrars of voters and the town clerks, Denise Merrill and her staff managed to pull off a safe, secure, and accurate election with record turnout. And finally, I would like to thank Governor Ned Lamont, who has been a strong partner in the protection and expansion of voting rights. As the mother, mother of a daughter living in Austin, Texas, I can tell you how reassuring it is here in Connecticut to have a Secretary of the State and a Governor who believe in protecting voting rights rather than suppressing them. Thank you. Thank you very much, Peggy, and thank you for all your work over all these years. And uh, that completes our award ceremony, but now it is my very great pleasure and honor to, do, to introduce um, my compatriot, uh, my colleague in all of these endeavors, and the most uh, amazing governor that I could have wanted in a situation like 2020. Uh, we were partners all the way in trying to make it possible for every Connecticut citizen to be able to vote safely in 2020. And I think we succeeded, but it was largely due to his efforts and his persistence in hanging tough with me and uh, passing the legislation we needed. Of course, the legislature was also wonderful. They understood the situation, but we never could have gotten that far without the support of our governor, Ned Lamont. So it is my uh, proud moment to introduce him today. Thank you. Thank you, hey, thank you, Denise. And um, I love being here at the Connecticut Historical Society. I love looking at all the great taverns and watering holes of yesteryear. Um, I didn't get to visit them all, but I, I do see my uh, old friend, former Attorney General George Jepson here. He was, uh, you're studying for the bar, not studying the bar. Uh, I see a lot of folks here who stood up every day um, to try and make it easier for people to vote. And uh, isn't that what it's all about? I want people to vote. I want um, everybody to have a stake in the outcomes. I want them to be involved in what we're trying to do. Uh, the ACLU, thank you. You know, and making sure that folks um, uh, coming out on parole, they have their chance to vote. You have a second chance, I want you voting. I want you involved. I want you involved every day. And Common Cause, the outreach that you have provided, and Indivisible, and uh, League of Women Voters, thank you. I, I see my friend Tom Swan from CCAG, Citizens, Connecticut Citizens Action Group. We want people able to vote, make it easier for people to vote. I think that's what makes a democracy work, when people have a stake in the outcome. And um, I'm a little sad to see my friend uh, Denise at such a tender age um, contemplating retirement. Uh, but I do think it's really great that the year that she's before she is retiring, we had the biggest turnout in the history of the state. The biggest turnout in the history of the state. And um, thanks to our wingmen, uh, Scott Bates and Gabe, and uh, the team that helped uh, put that together, um, uh, Jason and Jerry, and the legislature standing up and uh, making this a possibility. And I hope to think, I think it was a, a dress rehearsal this uh, last presidential election. I mean, we had early voting. We had absentee balloting. You know what? People liked it. They loved it. They voted with their feet. 35% of the people voted early absentee. They made a difference. And we were able to do it safely. And, you know, for this last couple of years, I'm afraid I got a little distracted. GOTV was get out the vaccine. But um, we're getting back to a new normal. We're back to get out the vote. And I think 
We're not Florida. We're not Texas. We're not Georgia. I don't know what they're doing down there. I want, I want you to weigh in. I want people to vote. I want them to have a state, stake in the election and stake in what we're doing coming out of it. So with that, Denise, I want to say uh, it's a little early, but thank you for everything you've done on our behalf. Thank you, Governor, and uh, again, thank you to all the groups. I would like to introduce uh, my friend Jerry Reyes to come up and say a few words. Jerry is a chair of the Black and Puerto Rican Caucus, and he wanted to say a word of congratulations also on behalf of the legislature and the caucus to the awardees today. Thank, thank you, Madam Secretary. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. It's an honor and privilege to be here representing the great state of Connecticut and my city, Waterbury. And uh, I am uh, a proud member of the BPRC and uh, have a colleague here in the Majority Leader Rojas. Uh, but we got to do what I say is probably the easiest thing once you've already made up your mind, which is hit the green or red button. But if I had a big mirror here, I would hold it up and I would show it at you guys. And you'd be looking at yourself in the mirror because the advocates that help us get to this uh, to these votes that actually expand the voting rights for all is every one of you here in this audience. And I want to, first of all, thank each of you for your advocacy. I see a lot of you at the uh, Capitol almost on a daily basis. And I wanted to just take a moment to uh, 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 recognize and congratulate a, the young recipient, Ms. Akia Cullum, uh, who Representative McGee appropriately and properly addresses as the future. Congratulations to you, madam. You and your family very well deserve, as well as all other recipients. These voting right expansions matter, and there's the reason why. They're the future. We're the ones that are pushing the green and red button, but you guys are the ones that actually are the engine. Thank you very much. So that concludes our awards today. Happy National Voter Registration Day. Go register somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.